Hey guys, Mr. Zigner here. We're now looking at lesson 1-5. It's our problem solving investigation. Every chapter in our book has one lesson that's called the problem solving investigation. And in this chapter, we're going to be looking at the guess and check method. All right, so here we go. The concession stand at the school play sold lemonade for 50 cents and cookies for 25 cents. They sold seven more lemonades than cookies, and they made a total of $39.50. How many lemonades and cookies were sold? Well, you want to pull out those important numbers and facts from the problem they give you so we can start making a plan of how we're going to solve this. Well, one thing I'm seeing is the uh, lemonade was 50 cents and the uh, cookies were 25 cents. Another important one is how they sold seven more lemonades than cookies. And finally, there's that total down here. They have a total of $39.50 sold. We're going to need those facts to solve this problem. So down here, we understand the problem. That's the first step in the four-step problem-solving plan that our book stresses. We're supposed to understand that problem. Then we make a plan. Then we go ahead and solve that problem. And finally, you want to check, that's our fourth step, to make sure you've actually answered the correct question. So here we go. We know the cost of each lemonade and cookies. We know the total amount of money made and that they sold seven more lemonades and cookies. We need to figure out how many lemonades and cookies were sold. So we're just going to make a guess and then check, then adjust the guess. We may have to adjust our numbers up or down. All right, here we go. So I pre-solved this and I made a couple of uh, guesses and then I adjusted my answer until I got the correct answer. Here we go. First, I guessed up top right here that maybe there were 14 cookies. Well, if there were 14 cookies, they said there were seven more lemonades. So that means there were 21 lemonades sold. So I tried solving it using those numbers, of course. 25 cents times each of those cookies, 50 cents times each of those lemonades, and I ended up with an answer of 14. Well, that's no good because really the guess is, is just too low. So I need to adjust my numbers up. So my next guess is 50 cookies and 57 lemonades. Again, I have to have a number for lemonades that's seven more than the number of cookies. All right, so here we go. Well, again, 25 cents for the 50 cookies, 50 cents times the 57 lemonades. Now I end up with $41 on this problem. Well, now I'm too high, but not by much. So I know I need to drop my guess, but not by a whole lot. Well, here I pick the correct answer, and that's 48 cookies. Well, if I sold 48 cookies, I need to sell seven more lemonades, and 48 plus 7 is 55. So here we go. 25 cents times the 48 cookies, 50 cents times the 55 lemonades, and bang, we nail the answer of $39.50. So of course, as you can see, our answer would be, and we do want to write that out properly, 48 cookies, and 55 lemonades. All right. Now they say to check the answer. You can see I had mentioned that earlier. You want to check to make sure your answer is right. 48 cookies cost $12. So right here, this 25 cents times 48. Well, that was $12. And the 55 lemonades end up costing $27.50. Put those together, you get the exact $39.50. Plus, they finally mentioned here that 55 was indeed 7 more than 48. So our guess is correct. Here's one we're supposed to try on our own. Let's take a look. At the zoo, we have a total of 122 adults. Well, that's an important thing. I want to make sure I remember that. Oh, I'm sorry. And, and children. So 122 adults and children went to the zoo. There are more, more children than adults. All right, gonna wanna remember that. 
Adult tickets cost $6.50, and the children's tickets are $3.75. The total cost of the tickets was $597.75. So how many adults and children went to the zoo? Well, one thing I'm noticing right away is it said there were more children than adults. Look at my four answer choices. Do some of those not match just that fact? Take a look. Do any of them not have more children than adults? Right. Maybe you noticed B here. It can't be B because there's actually more adults than children. Where's the other one that's wrong? Do you see it? Well, it's D. Once again, there are more adults than children. 64 adults and 58 children. It's supposed to be more children than adults. So I'm down to already by eliminating. Actually, that's a different problem solving strategy we're going to be doing later, which is eliminating choices as answers in a multiple choice situation. But anyway, back to guess and check. So I'm down to these two answers. I'm going to pull up my calculator here. It's going to help me out. So let's try C first to see if that works. So they're saying 58 adults, okay, 58 adults times, how much were their tickets? $6.50, so times $6.50. Okay, that's $377. And now those 64 children. So 64 children times, how much were their tickets? three dollars and seventy five cents that's two hundred and forty dollars now let's add those together so we had our three hundred seventy seven dollars plus our two hundred forty dollars for a total of six hundred seventeen uh, well that's too high but not by much. So I'm thinking this is gonna be our right answer. A, right here. Well, let's try out those numbers and, and find out. So now we have 51 adults times, how much were their tickets? $6.50. 300, $31.50. And now the 71 children, so 71 times those children's tickets were $3.75, that's $266.50. Now finally, I'm just adding those together, so we're going to do $331.50. Plus the $266.25. Bam, there it is. $597.75. Oops. We've got our answer. Now, in practice, in the classroom, we're actually not going to have many, if any at all, uh, these problems that are going to be multiple choice. So we're gonna have to literally take a guess and then adjust our answers. Here, it was a little easier because I had just four choices. And I was able to, once I found the, the one that was wrong, I knew the other one had to be right. In class, again, we're gonna have to just start from our own guess and then adjust our answers from there. But at least that gives you an idea of the kind of things we'll be doing. All right. And now I'm going to try something new here. Just my crazy math facts. Did you know um, that sunlight does have a speed? Light does have a speed. Uh, and they know the answer in both kilometers per uh, second and, of course, miles per second. I'm going to use the miles per second since we're one of only three countries left in the whole world that still uses the customary measurement system. So, light speed in miles per second is 186,000 miles per second. 
And we do know that roughly the distance from Earth to Sun is about 93 million miles. Well, sometimes the Earth is actually further away and sometimes it's a little bit closer than that, but it's about an average of 93 million. So how long does it take for sunlight to reach the Earth at that speed? Well, it just takes a little bit of crazy math to figure that out. If we take our 93 million, get our commas in there, and divide it by the 186,000, and that's in miles per second, we'll find out how many seconds it takes for that sunlight to get to Earth. Let's go grab that calculator again. Clear that old problem. So we have 93 million. We're going to divide that by the 186,000. Oh, it goes nice and evenly. 500. 500 what? 500 seconds. I know it's 500 seconds because up here, this was, I was dividing by miles per second. So I divided my miles per second into my miles and I'm left with 500 seconds. Now I'm having trouble though. 500 seconds, how long is that? Maybe if it was in minutes, I would understand that better. Well, since there are 60 seconds in one minute, if I divide that 500 seconds by 60, that should turn it into minutes for me. So let's give that a try. So 500 divided by 60 to turn that into minutes. And there it is, 8.3 repeating. So what does that mean? 8.3 repeating. Well, that's 8.3 repeating minutes. Okay, so 8.3. Well, I know the eight would be eight minutes, but what's 0.3? Do you remember that? 0.3 repeating turned into a fraction. Well, 0.3 repeating is one third eight minutes plus another one third of a minute. Now, do you know what one third of a minute is? Let's see, there's 60 seconds in a minute. So one third of a minute will be one third of 60. Do you know what one third of 60 is? Well, it turns out it's 20 seconds. So really, here it comes. It takes eight minutes and 20 seconds for sunlight to reach the Earth. So, if the sun just winked out, and don't worry, I don't think that's gonna happen. Scientists tell us it's not gonna be for another four billion years. But if that sun did just wink out, you'll find out in about eight minutes and 20 seconds. <laughs> okay, so that's today's Zig's Crazy Math Facts. We'll see you tomorrow. Make sure to check for the questions you need to answer on my website. Should be right below this video. Thanks a lot. We'll see you guys tomorrow.